So we're in the process of adding 20 more solar panels to the top of our workshop roof here. And we did the Iron Ridge roof racking system. We put that on there yesterday. And today we're gonna start running um, our conduit and wiring from the roof up here down through the workshop into the solar power room. So we're gonna start off up here by installing the junction box. And I've got a, a J box from Iron Ridge. This is made to mount on their rail system here. And we've got to put this together. We've got to drill out our holes for our conduit and for our PV wires going to our solar panels. And then we'll get it mounted up here on the rail. And then we can start running our conduit. So the J-Box ended up coming with a piece of DIN rail to mount on the inside. Then it also came with a ground bar to put in there as well. It doesn't come with terminal blocks. You have to supply your own. So I've put five holes in here, four for PV wires. So I've got two for one array on one side and I've got two on the other side for the other array. And then here at the bottom, I've got a three quarter inch hole for our conduit. And all of the fittings that I'm gonna thread into here are watertight fittings. They have gaskets on them. So these little uh, cord grips for the, the PV wire, there is, a, there is a rubber gasket on these. So when it goes on, it will seal on this box and keep it watertight. And then for the conduit fitting, you have to use a Myers hub and a Myers hub has a gasket on the inside here. So when you tighten it down, it also keeps a watertight seal when it's mounted in the box. Get our terminal blocks popped in here. All right, we got our J box assembled. You can see we've got our strain reliefs, our cord grips on here for our PV wire on both sides. We've got our Myers hub down here in the bottom. And then on the inside, we ended up mounting some terminal blocks. I think these are big enough, they take like six gauge wire, so it's plenty big enough for the 10 gauge wire that we're gonna be running. So I think this junction box is supposed to mount to the flat part of this rail. Um, so on this rail, the way I have it mounted, the junction box would go on this way. I think that'll be fine. It'll be under the solar panel. And then right here we have a purlin in the roof. So we got a two by four under here. And I'm going to put this little bitty, little bitty weather seal flashing. This is made for three quarter inch conduit. It's very small. And I'm going to mount that to the roof right there. And we'll put an LB fitting that will go through there straight down to our Myers hub. And then that's everything that needs to be done out here. But before we drill a hole in the roof, I'm gonna go downstairs. We're gonna thread a couple pieces of three quarter inch conduit. All right, I've got my piece of conduit together. So this one's gonna go with the Myers hub, go in the junction box, and then this will go down through the roof into the, the attic part of the workshop. So now I can use this to determine exactly where I want to drill my hole in the roof. Double check our fit. Yeah, I think that'll work. So our little piece of flashing here, I've cut off the top of it so it's uh, the right size for a three quarter inch conduit. It could be used for smaller pipe. And I'm going to use through the roof caulking. Um, that is 100% silicone caulking made for roofing to seal this up. 
and I am liberally going to just put this on the bottom and this is the stickiest stuff there is do not get it on you it is very sticky my hands were all black yesterday because I got this on me and then everything stuck to me all right we're gonna I'm gonna center this up over the hole press it down All right, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, slip in our conduit. All right, pull it back up. All right. And there you go, that's all the conduit that's gonna be up here on the roof. And I just realized I needed one more of these uh, cord grips or these strain reliefs because we're gonna have a ground wire that comes out of this box and grounds the rail system. So I'll have to end up putting an additional hole in that. But for now, we are done up here. We just need to continue that conduit through the pole barn and back over to the solar room. So according to the National Electric Code, and I'll put the code up here on the screen, but any of the DC solar panel wiring that's in or on a building has to be ran in a metal raceway or type MC metal clad cable, and it has to be inside metal enclosures until it gets to its first disconnecting means. So we're gonna be using two types of conduit in the workshop. And mainly we're gonna be using EMT and it's easily bent with a hand bender. It's easy to put in, it's easy to cut. You just put it together with some compression fittings or some set screw fittings, uh, easy to work with. And then we're also gonna be using some metal clad flexible conduit as well. And this is to help snake through some of those really tough parts inside where I'm gonna to have to like go down a wall and then over to another room. This is where I'm gonna be using this flexible conduit. And we're also gonna be using some uh, metal rigid conduit fittings. And this will give us some pull points for the wire. It'll also help us maybe give us some good 90 degree fittings where we can pull the wire out and then back in. And we'll be using a few of these. All right, I just finished the conduit run from the roof down here to the solar power room, and I was able to do every bit of it in EMT. I didn't use any of this flexible conduit. Um, so let me go ahead, I'll just show you the route real quick. So right there is where the conduit comes through the roof. I've got a fitting there for a pull point, and then it offsets up against the rafter, comes across, offsets again for the roof pitch, comes down the roof, and then it comes down the wall, and then I got another fitting where it goes through the wall. So the conduit turns and goes along the wall here, and then it turns down into the solar power room. So then the conduit comes through the ceiling, down the wall into our wiring trough, and then on the bottom of that, that right there, junction box, that is my solar panel junction box. They all terminate there before they go on to whatever inverter they're hooked to. So now that the metal conduit is ran, According to the National Electric Code, if you want to pass an inspection, the conduit has to be labeled that it is a PV DC photovoltaic circuit. That's a mouthful. But every 10 foot on the conduit, it has to be labeled. Every fitting on the conduit has to be labeled. Every enclosure that that passes through. So here's the cover of my uh, wireway, and here's one of the stickers right here solar PV DC circuit. And I don't have any more of these labels. You can imagine you could go through quite a few of these, trying to label all your conduits that often in every fitting. Uh, so I'm not gonna do that today, but I'm gonna have to get some ordered. So now it's time to start pulling wire through the conduit up to the roof, and we'll be pulling a positive and negative for each solar array. We'll also be pulling a ground wire so we can pull it up there and ground the solar array as well, or at least the, the mounting system and the solar panels. Now I know a lot of you have heard of PV wire, uh, photovoltaic wire, and that wire is really only necessary outside 
where it is exposed, where you're hooking it up to the solar panels and it's running across the back of your solar panels or your ground mount array, where the wire is exposed to the sunlight and the elements and everything, you have to run the photovoltaic, the PV wire. And according to the National Electric Code, the PV wire is supposed to be at least dual rated. It will be listed as PV wire, but it'll also be used or listed as use to cable, which is underground service entrance cable. So it's also a direct burial cable. So PV wire could be used um, when it's exposed on the solar panels, but it can also be used for direct bury to run the, the PV back to wherever you're going with it. So if the wire isn't exposed and you're not direct burying it, you don't have to use PV wire. What you have to use is you have to use stranded wire and it has to have a certain number of strands by the code. So if you're running 16 gauge to 10 gauge, I'll put it up here on the screen, the National Electric Code says you have to have a stranded wire with 19 strands. And if you go up to eight gauge, it requires at least 49 strands inside of the wire. So just keep in mind, this is the DC power from your solar panels. It has to be a stranded cable and it has to be a certain number of strands or at least a minimum number of strands. So the wire we're gonna be running is THHN wire, which is stranded building wire. And if you look at that, hopefully you can see that, that has got a total of 19 strands of wire on it. Now, why would I pull this wire instead of PV wire? Well, let's look at the size difference for one. This is, since it's direct burial cable, way thicker insulation, way harder to pull, and it costs more. So there's a cost savings, and you can fit more of these in a conduit than you can these. So when you're pulling in a conduit, you're better off just to go with regular building stranded wire. And these are the exact same gauge wire, exact same number of strands, it's just the insulation on there is different. All right, I've got my wire all set up and ready to pull. So I take the first wire, put a loop on it in case I need to put a fish tape on there and pull on it. And then I just keep adding one more wire. So there's now it's two wires, then now it's three wires, now it's four wires, and then five wires. It just progressively gets bigger. I'm gonna try to take this and see if I can just push it through the conduit. If not, I'll get a fish tape and we'll pull it through. So I've got two of my wires twisted together downstairs, so using an ohm meter to identify them. So this is them right here. All right, so here's what the inside of the junction box looks like. So I've got one set of wires for one array and then the other set, and I just need to label these four and five. And because I've already got three arrays up here, and then the ground wire hits the ground block. And the only thing I really need to do here is I need one more penetration here to run the ground out and to bond it to the rail. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the covers back on. I think we are done up here until we start mounting solar panels. All right, I've got enough wiring here in the room to be able to finish this up. I did go ahead, I do have some wraparound labels on here to identify which ones are array four and array five but I don't think I'm going to finish this up today because these solar panels are gonna eventually run over and to the inverter on the house. So what I wanna do is I wanna put a PV disconnect in here and then go over to the house. So I'll probably do that in the next video when we actually mount the solar panels, but at least the conduit's done and the wire is ran it's, and it's all hooked up on the roof. So I do need to put out my little disclosure. I'm not a licensed electrician. I've got an electrical degree. I've done electrical work for 25 years and I'm doing what I believe is correct. And it may not be perfectly right, but I, this is just what I'm doing and I'm sharing my 
experience with you guys. So on the next video in this series, we're going to mount these 20 solar panels up on the roof and we're gonna get them wired back through the solar power room all the way back over to the basement of our house to the 6,000 XP. And we're gonna be just over 19,000 watts of solar total once these are on. And that should be enough solar panels that we should be able to produce all the power that we need. So hopefully we'll have a good weather window and we can get these up before the end of the year. But I think that's it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.